my name is Andy Stepani, and uh, I'm a volunteer with the Stop Unintentional Cruelty Campaign. Uh, as a volunteer, um, I try to do my most that I can to get involved with the campaign to close down a laboratory that's called Huntington Life Sciences. Huntington Life Sciences has a facility in the UK, there's three in the UK, and one here in New Jersey in the States. Uh, every year, they kill about 180,000 animals. Currently, there's about 70,000 that are sitting in puddles of their own congealed blood and vomit, listlessly waiting to die right now. And by the end of the standard work week day, nine to five hours, they kill about 500 animals a day. And what do they test them on? What do they do with them? They test products like fluorine adhesives, agrochemicals, pesticides, fungicides, household cleaners, toothpaste, suntan lotions, and a very small percentage of pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals make about three to five percent each year in the amount of testing that happens there. About 18 to 30 percent is agrochemicals, and the rest are household items. Now with that said, Huntington Life Sciences became the subject of undercover investigations, the first being from PETA, and the other one being from an NBC affiliate in the UK. In the UK, over the course of four years, there were five undercover investigations into Huntington Life Sciences. Over the course of those five undercover investigations, the investigators found people grabbing beagle puppies, four-month-old beagle puppies, grabbing them and punching them in the face. They found a monkey with a swastika tattooed on its forehead. They found people in New Jersey cutting open a monkey without any anesthetics during a post-mortem necropsy. A necropsy is like a, a dissection that happens after the animal is dead, or ready to examine their organs, without any anesthetics. That animal is not euthanized in advance. So with all that said, during the short period of time that investigators were in there, so much egregious footage was compiled. And so that was the stepping stone to building this campaign against the laboratory, because not only was this laboratory not participating in any life-saving research, but instead the laboratory was testing products. A lot of the products were making our families sick. A lot of the companies that were contracting out to were companies like Dutch Shell Oil and Exxon, companies that were polluting the environment. Companies like Monsanto, companies that were producing pesticides that were destroying our earth. Things that were not helping people. So with that said, no one can make the argument to us that these people are doing life-saving research. What about the children? So we said, this is a good laboratory to start showing the people as a stepping stone to say this is what animals go through. This is the suffering that they endure. It is not a far-reaching stretch for people, the average American, to think about when it comes to animal suffering. So we compiled all the undercover investigative footage and said, we're gonna take this public. And there was tons of exposés that happened and there was a lot of public outcry immediately after. In 1999, the campaign against Huntington Left Sciences started in the UK. By 2001, it had its official kickoff here in the United States with demonstrations and lab raids in New Jersey. By 2002, there was an organization by the name of Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty USA that was incorporated as a national nonprofit. And this is where things get murky. We run a website. The website reports on actions. It reports on actions from people all over the country, all over the world. And what we do is we try to remain an unbiased media source when it comes to the actions that happen. And then if you look on the side column here are all the opinion pieces. Side column here are things about our indictment, what to do if you're a customer of Huntington Life Sciences, things about the book Terrorists and Freedom Fighters, and then learning how to recognize gang members. When we say learning to recognize gang members, we're talking about the repressive police that deal with us on a daily basis. And why did our campaign get so much repression? Well, we had a basic strategy. The strategy was this. It was, we're not going to waste our breath standing outside of the laboratory, day in and day out, with signs telling people that they kill puppies for a living. Because they know they kill puppies for a living. We're not gonna go and tell them, hey, you're doing contracts for Monsanto, where the following chemicals are out in the market right now. Some of them are being shipped out to Mexico and being sprayed on our food. Things like DDT, the relegalization of DDT, which was once banned in this country, <clears throat> is now being produced in this country and shipped down to Mexico, sprayed on our food, and then shipped back to us. Not to mention all the undocumented workers that are working in Southern California exposed to it, or the workers in Mexico that are exposed to it, 
that are losing you know, nerve damage and losing their appendages due to all different types of pesticides sprayed in that food. Their rights don't count either. So now it's people suffering, environment suffering, everything. We don't need to tell them that because they know who they're taking the contracts out with. They know full well that they tested DDT and hooked in life sciences in the 70s. So with all this said, why would we stand outside this laboratory day in and day out wasting our breath? It's not symbolic. It's not effective. It may be symbolic. We do it once in a while, but it's not effective. So what we decided to do is we decided to say, look at it like a house of cards. And what supports this house of cards other than the cards on the bottom? If we pull the cards out from underneath this house of cards, then the whole thing will come down. And what comprises a corporation? What is its Achilles heel? Where does it get its fuel from? Where does it get its food from? And clearly it's money. And so the way we decided to organize a campaign was this. Target shareholders. Target investors. Target corporations that are financial pillars of support. Target the insurance agency. Target the auditor. Target the people that do customer contracts with them. Any way that there is money being pumped into this laboratory, this money is keeping this laboratory alive. So since 1999, in 1997, Huntington Life Sciences stock was floating somewhere in the area around $35. By 2002, their stock dropped to one one thousandth of a penny because of these protests. It was very effective. Financially, we went out, we protested these people, convinced them to sell their stock back. And in the process of that, financially decimated this lab. 2001, another company steps in, another investment firm. It took us nine months to protest this company and get them out. In 2001, a company, a Wall Street firm called Stevens Incorporated, steps in and decides to give them $43 million in a loan and buy up somewhere in the area of 41 million shares of the stock in hopes that if they give this loan to a failing company, the company will get back on its feet, will buy up the stock at a low price, and then the stock will go up, we'll make more money in the long run. Warren Stevens sold all his stock back. He took $11 million of the personal loss to himself when he sold the stock back. And that took about nine months of protesting him. Now yes, the protests were raucous, the protests were nasty, they were offensive, sometimes they were childish, but nothing that happened was violent and nothing was terrorism. So Warren Stevens sells it back, they have these loans due back, and they have an aggregate of loans due back next year in excess of $89 million. So this company has a guillotine hanging over its neck. This company is going to close. We are going to close them. They owe $90 million to other people. What are we going to do? We need to make sure that they no longer have sources of revenue within customer contracts to pay back those loans. We also need to make sure there's not going to be another company that's willing to step up and provide them with another loan come January 13th of 2006 for the first $30 million to do back. We've got to make sure that someone else isn't going to do the same thing that Warren Stevens did. So we need to set a precedent that if you so much as wash Huntington Life Sciences' car, then you become a target of this campaign. If you shake their hand, you're a target of this campaign. If you go to a conference where they set up a table, unfortunately, that whole conference is going to get protested. And this has been a very, very effective tactic with tearing apart this laboratory. But with that, with this effectiveness, all of a sudden, we've seen a lot of repression. And now there's no question that here in America, there are so many repressed groups and oppressed groups. And white, middle-class American males are not